Welcome back to the playlist on amino acids. In this video, we're going to look at the biosynthesis of melatonin from a neurotransmitter called serotonin. And melatonin is, uh, it's not necessarily a neurotransmitter, it's actually a hormone that's produced by the pineal gland. So, this, so melatonin is produced by a structure in the epithalamus called the pineal gland or sometimes pineal gland. Okay, so this is the glandular tissue in the brain that produces melatonin, okay? And it does so from serotonin, okay? Now, this amino acid right here that's shown here, this is L-tryptophan, okay? And tryptophan is what we call an essential amino acid. If you watched the video on serotonin, you know that, that tryptophan is an essential amino acid. And what that implies is that we absolutely cannot biosynthesize it. We have to get it through the diet. Now, what exactly is biosynthesis? Because if you're watching this playlist, uh, you may not have seen biosynthesis. Well, essentially what it is, is it's we're taking everyday molecules that we find around the cell, like acetyl-CoA, methionine, ATP, things like that, and we're basically making various modifications and putting the building blocks together and making uh, more complicated molecules like serotonin and melatonin. And they're not incredibly complicated, but as you'll soon see, uh, melatonin is more complicated than serotonin, so we're going to have to make some various modifications to serotonin, which include an acetylation by acetyl-CoA and methyl transfer uh, using S-adenosylmethionine. And if you need to go back and watch the videos on those things, they are available. Um, I may put them in this playlist, so keep watch for that. Okay, so... Um, first of all, I want to mention this, is that if you go back to the video on serotonin production from tryptophan, we mentioned that in that particular part of the pathway, uh, tryptophan hydroxylase was the rate determining step. Well, it turns out that in this reaction sequence, if we sort of exclude uh, tryptophan hydroxylase from that, so in other words, you exclude the, the three enzymes that were required for serotonin biosynthesis, this first enzyme that's listed here, this enzyme which is called hydroxyindole n acetyltransferase this is the rate determining step. Now in the total synthesis of melatonin from tryptophan, tryptophan hydroxylase is the rate determining step. And we would expect that because usually oxygen dependent enzymes are rather slow. But in terms of these two enzymes that we're going to see here, Hydroxyindole N acetyltransferase is going to be the rate determining step over the methyl transferase that we'll see later. Okay. And I just want to mention at this point that melatonin is a really important hormone. Like we said, it's released from the pineal gland or the pineal gland or whatever you want to call it. But it's essentially going to promote sleep and it's released according to a 24-hour uh, circadian cycle. And it's specifically released in response to darkness. So whenever it gets dark out at night, you have an increased melatonin synthesis and melatonin helps promote sleep. And that's basically its main function. Okay, but the idea is it comes from serotonin and it also comes from tryptophan because serotonin comes from tryptophan. Now here's the point, is tryptophan is an essential amino acid. This means that we cannot get it through the diet. So that means that serotonin also is essential because we can't make tryptophan. We don't have the enzymes necessary to biosynthesize it. So if you have a deficiency of tryptophan, you will likely have a deficiency of serotonin. And if you have a deficiency of serotonin, you will also have a deficiency of melatonin because there's only one pathway in humans to make melatonin, and that's from serotonin. So a deficiency of tryptophan is very detrimental. It'll cause a deficiency of all sorts of other things as well, including proteins like lysozyme. I mean, most proteins contain tryptophan, but lysozyme is certainly one that contains a lot of tryptophan. But the idea is that the deficiency of any amino acid is bad, but a deficiency of tryptophan will result in the deficiency of both serotonin and melatonin. So you'll have all sorts of sleep dysregulation because both serotonin and melatonin regulate sleep. Serotonin is more the regulator, but melatonin in general promotes sleep. Okay. What we're going to be doing in this video, though, is not really talking so much about the physiology of melatonin. That will come in a different video later on. We're more concerned in this video about analyzing the pathway, analyzing structure, and so forth. So what I have um, below here is the structure of tryptophan. This is an amino acid. Like we said, it's an essential amino acid. 
And what you should notice is that when you compare this to the structure of serotonin up here, I'm going to do this in green, but notice that the alpha carboxyl group is gone. Okay, that was that that catalytic action was done by an enzyme called L amino acid, excuse me, L aromatic amino acid decarboxylase. So usually it's abbreviated AAAD. And that stands for, they usually, sometimes they'll put the L in front of here, but that means L aromatic amino acid decarboxylase. That was the enzyme that removed that particular carboxyl group from the alpha carbon. Keep in mind, this is the alpha carbon, this is the beta carbon. And also, this is the five position on the indole ring. And the indole ring right here, let me do this in, in pink. I had already drawn some stuff here, but this right here that I'm circling in this pinkish color, all this business, this is the indole ring. So that is the indole ring, and this position right here that I put in green, this is the five position on the indole ring. So when we use tryptophan 5 hydroxylase, we added this particular hydroxyl group to the five position on the indole ring. So that's the origin of that hydroxyl group, and then aromatic amino acid decarboxylase removed the carboxyl group from the alpha carbon, and that generated this guy, which is serotonin. So now we're gonna pick up from here and kind of see how we get to melatonin. Now, the initial and rate limiting step in this pathway from serotonin is going to be catalyzed by hydroxyindole and acetyltransferase. And the reason the enzyme gets that name is, is because number one, it's a hydroxyindole ring that we're doing the action on. But we're also transferring an acetyl group to the nitrogen that's, uh, that, that, that was originally from the alpha carbon of tryptophan. So this, this nitrogen that's right here, I'm gonna circle it in yellow. Uh, this nitrogen right here, this is the nitrogen that we're transferring um, the acetyl group onto. And this enzyme is going to use a, a specific substrate to transfer the acetyl group, and it's your typical acetyl donor, and that's going to be acetyl-CoA. So this molecule right here, this is acetyl, sometimes they put the S in here to denote that it is a thioester bond, acetyl-CoA. So acetyl-CoA, we haven't seen it much in this playlist at all because it's mostly a biosynthetic tool, but acetyl-CoA is the universal acetyl group donor. And all acetyl groups have two carbons. So this is carbon one and this is carbon two, but in any case, they transfer two carbons and whenever they transfer the two carbons, it's always in something referred to as a nucleophilic acyl substitution. And that's what we're going to look at right now. Okay, so the initial step in uh, hydroxyindole and acetyltransferase is a proton transfer from this histidine residue in the active site. So specifically, it's this shift base part of the histidine, and it's going to catalyze a proton transfer on... Um, the fully protonated serotonin amine. And that's going to result in these electrons between the hydrogen and the nitrogen coming and doing a nucleophilic acyl substitution on the acetyl group, specifically the carbonyl of acetyl-CoA, and that generates a tetrahedral intermediate that's shown right here in the next picture. So this, this molecule right here has a special name, and you need to be aware of it. It's called a tetrahedral a tetrahedral intermediate. These tetrahedral intermediates are, are characteristic of all nucleophilic attacks that occur on trigonal planar complexes. And if you notice, if you look at acetyl-CoA, this component that's right here that I'll do in purple, this part right here, you notice that it is a trigonal planar complex. So when you do a nucleophilic acyl substitution on a trigonal planar complex, you should end up with a tetrahedral intermediate, and that tetrahedral intermediate is shown right here. Now, tetrahedral intermediates like this are usually stabilized by residues in the active site, um, and there's also a, a minor salt bridge that forms right here between the amine and the oxyanion there. But changes in conformation of the enzyme will force it to collapse. And so this lone pair will reform the carbonyl. And when it reforms the carbonyl, you can't have a pentavalent carbon because uh, if, you, if you reform that bond, that pi bond, then you'd have four sigma bonds in one pi bond, which accounts for five. So that can't be the case. So you have to have a leaving group. So always in these nucleophilic acyl substitutions, we have nucleophilic attack, generation of a tetrahedral intermediate, carbonyl reformation, and then loss of a leaving group. And the leaving group is going to be this, this thiolate of the coenzyme A. It's going to leave, and as it does, 
it's going to pick up a proton from this tyrosine residue in the active site. And that's going to generate a tyrosine anion. Okay, so tyrosine is just an amino acid in the active site of this enzyme. And keep in mind, this is still hydroxyindole and acetyl transferase. Now what we have successfully is we have acetylated this nitrogen, but something else has to happen. What we have to do essentially is we're going to have to um, take this proton right here off of the amine. Generally what you'll find in biochemistry is uh, amides, and keep in mind this functional group right here, this is an amide. Amides don't like to have extra protons on them. So what will end up happening is this tyrosine anion will initiate a proton transfer on this nitrogen and that will generate a neutral nitrogen which is definitely what we want and the structure that we want is shown right here so this right here this is N-acetyl serotonin let me write that down this is really important this structure is N-acetyl N-acetyl serotonin so N-acetyl serotonin has this characteristic acetyl group that's on what was the amine of the hydroxyindole, which happened to be serotonin. So because it has an acetyl group on the amine, you call it N-acetyl serotonin. Okay, but we're not really finished with this enzymatic mechanism yet. One thing you're going to find when you get into mechanisms um, scattered throughout biochemistry is you'll be left with sort of this leftover proton. And for a while, people really didn't understand where it went. Because if you think about it, we go back to the beginning of the mechanism. We had an initial proton transfer with this histidine residue right here. And we know from our definition of a catalyst that catalysts have to have a net um, unchanged form at the end of the reaction. But now this, nit this nitrogen of the histidine residue is protonated and that can't be the case. So what biochemists have inferred is there's a proton transfer with water. And this is going to be typical in a lot of reactions where they infer a, a final proton transfer with water. You'll see that in a lot of cases. We're actually going to see it again in this same reaction scheme. So what's going to happen is water will deprotonate this histidine residue to regenerate the resting state of the enzyme, which is the deprotonated histidine. Okay, so now at this point, we've gone through one reaction, which is hydroxyindole and acetyl transferase, the rate limiting step, and we've generated N acetyl serotonin. One thing I do want to mention um, about this particular enzyme is that it, it actually has some implications in autism. Um, because it's the rate determining step, and it's so important for the synthesis of melatonin, um, they found that people with autism tend to have lower levels of melatonin and it, the research has shown that it's very possible that there could possibly be some deficiency of this particular enzyme hydroxyindole and acetyl transferase so if you if you have one enzyme that's deficient in the pathway it will sort of screw up the synthesis of the final product which happens to be melatonin in this case okay so i just want to make that perfectly clear so now we have n acetyl serotonin now we're going to transfer a methyl group onto it. And this is catalyzed by a different enzyme. This is going to be N acetyl serotonin methyl transferase. Now, another name for this enzyme is going to be N acetyl serotonin O methyl transferase. So, in a lot of cases, what you do is you designate the atom onto which the um, the uh, functional group is going to be transferred. In this case, what we're going to find, and I'll do this in red so it so you can see it, we're going to transfer a methyl group onto this particular oxygen. Okay, and so that's what we call N-acetyl serotonin O-methyl transferase. So what's effectively effectively going to happen is we're going to substitute this proton on the hydroxyl group of the five position of the indole with a methyl group, and that's going to be catalyzed by this enzyme. So what's going to happen is we are going to deprotonate this hydroxyl group on the indole ring. So there's going to be an initial proton transfer using a carboxylate in the active site. Now, what I want to point your attention to before we really get into the nitty-gritty stuff of the mechanism, this molecule right here, this is called S-adenosyl 
methionine. Of course, I'm abbreviating methionine with, with its three-letter code. So this is s methionine, often abbreviated as SAM. We have a whole video on the SAM cycle, which goes into the synthesis of SAM. But one thing you should understand about s methionine is it's the universal methyl group donor. And here's sort of the justification as to why that is. If you look at this sulfur atom right here, the sulfur atom, which I will circle in light blue, this sulfur atom has um, three bonds to it. And sulfur doesn't, it can stabilize it to an extent, that positive charge, but it doesn't tremendously like to be like that. So it's raised up in energy a little bit. So if you were to somehow do a nucleophilic attack on that methyl group, which is right here, then you could force a good leaving group. And it turns out that the, the rest of this molecule, which I'll do in pink, all this business right here, okay, this rest of the molecule is something termed s adenosyl homocysteine. And it turns out that that's a really good leaving group. So you have a pretty good electrophile in this methyl group. You have a really good leaving group. So this carbon right here is really prone to nucleophilic attack. So whenever this carboxylate in the active site deprotonates this hydroxyl group on n acetyl serotonin, these electrons come out. Let me do this in yellow. These electrons come out and they specifically attack this carbon, this methyl group of s methionine, and that forces s homocysteine as the leaving group. So if we scroll over here and look at this, this molecule that's shown right here, this is called s adenosyl homocysteine, usually abbreviated HMC, s homocysteine. And so this molecule is a good leaving group. It will then... Um, get hydrolyzed and then you can redo a, a cycle of the SAM cycle. So this will essentially go into the SAM cycle and be recycled. So that's the beauty of, of these you know, pathways in biochemistry. You can use something, it's now pretty much useless, but then you can break it apart and reuse the, um, the components, the pieces and so forth. Okay, But in any case, what that gets us is this molecule right here, and I'm going to try to do this in a bold color, let's do it in red. This molecule right here is melatonin. So this molecule is melatonin. Okay? And the way you recognize melatonin is by this means. Okay? You have this hydroxyindole type of group right here. You have this hydroxyindole. And then notice you have this methyl group that's attached to what was the hydroxyl group. And then you have this acetyl group that's attached to the amine, which was originally part of the alpha carbon right here, and then this would have been the beta carbon. And that's how you recognize this guy, which is melatonin. Okay. In another video, we'll actually look at the degradation pathway for melatonin, and it creates some inactive metabolites. But we're not quite through with the mechanism, because what we've done now is we've essentially used this carboxylate to deprotonate the indole um, hydroxyl group, but now the carboxylate is in the carboxylic acid form, and that can't be because we would have to regenerate the resting state of the enzyme. So what will happen is water, just like in the case of the last enzyme, water will come in here and do an inferred proton transfer, and that regenerates this um, the resting state of the carboxylate. And again, and there should be an N here, but this is n acetyl serotonin o methyl transferase. So I hope this video gave you a little bit of intuition on how melatonin is synthesized. Just keep in mind, it's done by this guy, the pineal gland, which is in the epithalamus of the brain, and that melatonin is absolutely critical for sleep, along, along with its precursor, which is serotonin. Okay, so they both have to do with sleep, but melatonin is more involved in actually promoting the sleep. Serotonin is more on the regulatory side. Okay. Also realize that if you have a deficiency of tryptophan, you're in trouble because it's essential and it gets used to make serotonin and melatonin. See you in the next video.